Okay, guys, let's now move to question 2.1.4. So, without any waste of time, I'll just quickly read through a statement given there just before question 2.1.4. So, let's see. So, force F is now removed and the block accelerates down the plane. The kinetic frictional force remains the same, which is 20.37 Newton. I hope you still remember from the previous questions. So, question 2.1.4 reads as follows. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. So, I'm not sure if you all understand exactly what is required of us to calculate. So, if you can just try to visualize what's happening here, guys, I think you will realize that this question is actually a, one of the easiest questions that they want us to uh, solve. Obviously, if you remember from our previous questions, we were calculating whatever that we requested to calculate with object P moving upwards or in the direction of northeast. So, in this case, they remove that force which was pulling the object in that eastwards direction. So, obviously, we no longer have a force applied on that object which is pulling it or pushing it towards the east so what happens since that force is now removed obviously um, that block it now accelerates downwards and most importantly they just indicated that the frictional force remains the same and we know it's 20.37 newtons so let's have a look it's it's obvious because i'll just for a moment refer to the previous question if you remember we had this formula i won't go deep into explaining how did we come up with that formula for this question but if you can just have a look at this equation we we were calculating the force which was applied to that particular object which is object p so now in this case they are saying we no longer have that force and again the object is no longer moving upwards which means it's moving downwards so in your mind because there's a change of directions that will obviously influence the initial signs that you had on these two forces remember this is now being removed so i think uh, without any waste of time guys let's try to solve this question so it's question 2.1.4 uh, i hope you can see so now we obviously uh, rewrite the same formula but remember in this case the formula has to suit the scenario so we still have our f net which is the general formula our f net which is equals to m a so we now have to expand this formula to suit the situation so remember initially we had the force which was being applied so now in this case we no longer have a force um being applied but instead is the force of gravity which makes the object to obviously fall downwards so we add it with force of friction and it's equals to m a unlike the previous question guys if you remember we had our acceleration as zero but for this specific question the acceleration it won't be zero 
Why? Because they just indicated that it accelerates down the plane. Unlike with the previous question where they said it was being pulled towards the east, obviously, and uh, the acceleration was constant. I've clearly indicated what it means by a constant acceleration. So in this case, it accelerates downwards. So remember guys, I had a positive sign there because this formula says F net, which is the total force is equals to MA. So that's why I'm having a positive sign there. But on my third step, that's where I can now assign the signs, the correct signs which suits the situation. So I've got a positive FG. So that means a, I'll just try to redraw that object P. Remember, this is 30 degrees. And then now we obviously have the force of gravity. Um, what else have we got? We've got frictional force, the force of friction, which is 20.37, I think. So now, guys, this, op this object, it's obviously, um, you know, uh, accelerating down the plane, which is rough. So... I'm assuming that in the direction in which the object is moving, uh, it's positive. Then any other force acting against the direction in which the object is moving, then it becomes a negative force. So the only negative force that I've got is the force of, of friction, the frictional force. That's why I'm having a minus a force of friction which is equals to m a remember the a is what i'm calculating so i'm trying to be as low as possible and again to try to show all the necessary steps they may not be that much important but for someone i assume who has limited understanding when it comes to this chapter with these additional steps you might um you know score a very positive uh, point out of this uh, step. So on the next step, I'm still going to further expand this formula. So now uh, I've got mg, um, let's see, it's a, uh, was it sine? It's sine theta, okay? minus force of friction, which is equals to MA. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if we're still together, guys. Remember this formula, it doesn't change. The formula for force of gravity, it doesn't change. Remember, it's force of gravity or weight. So it doesn't matter whether you refer to that force as weight or a gravitational force which is force of gravity so this formula it doesn't change guys it remains as it is so what's what's important with this question it's for you to be aware of the sign and again to be aware of what's been given what's not given and most importantly what is it that you are required to calculate so at all times remember this is what the question wants you to calculate. Let's just quickly uh, read through that question so that we don't forget our goal. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. So the reason I went back to this question, guys, is because I want you to always remember that your final answer should be in meters per second squared. So whatever answer that you get, it should be meters per second squared. So that means out of all of this formula, all of that uh, equations, you only have three SI units, which is F for the force, 
uh, sorry, which is the Newton. You've got the force, which is measured in Newton. You've got the mass, which is measured in kg. And then we've got our acceleration, which is measured in meters per second squared. So obviously, you must be having that information. You must be having that information. And this is what you're looking for. So this kind of approach, guys, it helps you to always remember that your final answer should be meters per second squared, which is obviously your A. So at all times, you will never forget exactly uh, what you're calculating. And, and I can tell you guys, it does happen, especially when, you know, you, you are not good with a, a specific chapter and you're trying to just practice and you do it a lot, like you overdo it such that you end up even forgetting exactly what you're calculating. And if you had a memo, you would you just uh, take out a memo and check what the final answer looks like. So uh, before you even get to the final stage, you should at least have an idea of where you're going. So in this case, we already know that our final answer should be meters per square second. And again, that means we're calculating for the acceleration. So now it's just a matter of substituting and uh, punching on a calculator. Then we should be getting our final answer. So now let's substitute. We've got our mass, which is eight. Our G is 9.8. We've got sine. Remember the angle is 30. So that's where we have our 30 degrees. We subtract 20 point. Let me just quickly confirm. So of course it's 20.37 Newtons. Um, you equate it to eight times acceleration. So now you just punch all of this and divide by eight. That's how you get your acceleration. So remember guys, a positive answer will mean, a, you know, the acceleration is in the same direction as, a, a, you know, it's in the same direction as the, the, the object P. So in short, I'm not sure if, 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 uh, it will make sense. But what I'm trying to say, guys, is that this object is moving downwards. And we assumed that downwards uh, to be positive. So that means if we get our acceleration as a positive answer, that means the object, it increases its velocity as it goes down. So it actually means uh, it's in the same direction as the direction in which the object is moving. A good question asked so if it's a negative number then it means it's actually decelerating not accelerating so that means as it goes down its velocity decreases which means it might eventually come to a stop or come to rest but otherwise if we get a positive a that means um you know it's actually increasing its velocity as it goes down so I just want to punch on a calculator. I'm sure that ring light, it won't be a problem. So let's see. I've already explained exactly how um, you solve that question. So you punch all of that, subtract 20.37. Let's punch equal sign. This is how much we get. Then we have to divide by eight divided by eight. So that means we get 2.35. I hope you can see. So our acceleration in this case is 2.35 meters per square seconds. So that's your final answer for this question. And okay, uh, we shouldn't forget this part, obviously. So I'm just quickly going to show you how you score uh, your mark. So this question, guys, I hope you can see it wasn't really that much 
um, complicated. It was just a matter of you having a good understanding of exactly what the statement says. So we give you a mark, uh, let's see, for both of these, we can just give you a one mark. So that means one mark will actually, I think we should actually give you a mark just for that step because we already gave you a mark for that formula from the previous question, I think. And um, that's why I'm saying for both of these, we just give you a mark. But then it doesn't necessarily mean that if you didn't show this step, you're not going to get a mark. You'd still get a mark even if you just had that uh, equation alone. So we give you a mark there. And remember, this question is allocated for marks. So I hope you obviously know exactly where you score a, your other marks. You score a mark for the left side of a, that equation. We also give you a mark for correct substitution there. Obviously, a, your last mark comes from your final answer. So a, that's how easy it was, guys. So I think a, we can now move to the next question. Let me see. I think it's um, question 2.2. So without any waste of time, let's just move to um, question 2.2. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And again, in case if um, you feel like there's something that I've missed and you'd like me to to just come back to that particular point that I missed. Just just comment, just drop a comment on the comment section, then I'll see what I can do. I usually just, if it's not, if it doesn't need um, much of explanation, I'll just respond to your comments. But otherwise, if there are a lot of points that I've missed on this question, then I'll just do a special video addressing those comments or questions. So without any waste of time, um, Let's move to the next question. I'll do a separate video for the next question, of course.